Good evening. Welcome to our devotions for uh, Monday, August 24. Uh, it's a beautiful hot day today. Uh, our devotions come from uh, our portals of prayer uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, which I'm turning to my Bible to. For later date, it's interesting. It's a it's Paul's famous statement that uh, God said to him that my grace or Christ, whoever you want to say that uh, the voice was, says the Lord, but uh, says my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect or strong in weakness. interesting as a uh, learning about grace or hearing about grace I just finished up the bulletin for this coming Sunday wondering what to do there was wasn't really a good theme wasn't really interesting s stories I felt uh, interesting narratives uh, maybe the Jeremiah passage was pretty good but uh, so I decided to kind of blend them through, uh, put them in a grinder, and uh, what came out was uh, that uh, talking about grace and the difference between free grace and cheap grace, and uh, using uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer's book, The Cost of discipleship as a basis for the sermon. So uh, it was interesting that uh, I had chosen grace uh, for the uh, subject of this sermon for Sunday. And here we are. My grace is sufficient for you. So we'll probably get a little preview of what's going to be said on Sunday, but uh, that's okay. Uh, repeat is good. Repetition is good if it's repeated. It probably means that it's worth uh, knowing and learning. And uh, I know if you're like me, sometimes it requires three or four or five repetitions in order for us to actually ingest it for us to feel or hear or live it. So Paul, Paul is uh, writing to the Corinthians uh, he says there was somebody had a vision and uh, went and saw God and was revealed. Things were revealed to that person, and he said that he wouldn't. He doesn't boast. Uh, it's that person. It's just happened, you know. But later on, we know from what he says that it was him. So. What this was, I'm not sure. Uh, certainly, speculation could be that's when he spent time with Jesus. There's uh, the uh, the legend or the the thought that uh, how did Paul know so much about Jesus? And he learned it directly from Jesus, and this might have been the time when he spent with Jesus and had this vision. To have written uh, a good portion of the Old Testament, or I mean the New Testament. Get my words together here. But then he says, I'm not bragging, and in order to uh, prevent him from becoming too proud, that a thorn was given to him, a thorn in his side. So, uh, and he pleaded with God to remove that thorn, and that's when God said, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. Now it doesn't really say what that thorn was. Uh, it just says it was from Satan. Many have speculated that it was a physical ailment. Uh, Maybe he had, uh, you know, irritable bowels, uh, a hunchback, a limp, 
a stutter. Maybe that's why he wrote so much, because he uh, stuttered. Had different speculations on that, and they wished that God would get rid of that. Or the thorn could have been a person. You ever have a person that's a thorn in your side, or more than one person. Certainly in Paul's ministry, he had people running around behind him uh, trying to uh, change the gospel that he was preaching as if there is more than one gospel. So maybe these people were thorns. He'd go into a place and, and he'd teach them about uh, grace in Jesus Christ and someone would come behind and undo what he had just done. Or, and here's what I think, it was a torment from Satan. A torment, of internal torment, a struggle, kind of like what Luther had. Tormented, giving Paul doubt, maybe giving him a waffling faith. Digging at Paul saying, you're not good enough to be running around being pastor to these congregations, to writing all these letters, to explaining them. Jesus, after all, Paul, you're a terrible sinner. You persecuted the church. You're not good enough for God to love, much less use you as a tool for his evangelism. Yes, I think that's where Paul's struggle was. And Paul, who was smart, Paul, who was a proud Pharisee, was tormented in order to remain, like he says, to be humble, to be less than perfect, and to know that he was less than perfect. So that he was not depending on himself, but depending on God, i.e. the grace of God alone. That is grace. God's grace is sufficient for you. It's not cheap. It's not insequential. It's real. God's grace is real. God's grace is powerful. It's more than sufficient to get Paul through, and it's more than sufficient to get us through. Through our times of human doubt and torment. When we are humbled. When our faith is shaken. And we reach out and we say, God... What's going on? Take this thing away from me. And God says, I'm not going to take that thing away from you, but this is what I wanted from you. I wanted you to come to me, that you would feel my grace, that you would feel your weakness. And when you feel your weakness, that's when you will feel my strength, the strength to get you through. Faith is strongest when we've given up all trust in our own abilities, all trust in our own knowledge, all trust in our own vision, and place it all in God's hands. That's a good place to be in the grace of God, living under the shower. God's gift of grace because he loves you and he loves me. Let's end our evening with Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I've done wrong. And graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Yes. 
place all things, your body and your soul, into the hands of your God who loves you so, who gives you grace. God loves you and so do I. Good night.